Welcome back. Uh, let's do this. So there's a new feature introduced on the website. You've probably all seen Puzzle Storm at some point, uh, or Tactic Storm. Um, and the idea is that you're playing with a timer, if I recall correctly. And yeah, let, to get there, we actually have to select Puzzle Storm. And uh, this, oh, I thought this had a Zen mode. Apparently not. But let's see how well we can do anyway. Check, 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 check. Um, huh. What am I missing here? Oh, this check. That sound effect reminds me of this PC game called Insaniquarium, where you build up these crazy aquaria and fill it with all kinds of baubles. And each bobble has its own little special effect that improves uh, the quality of life for all the fish in your aquarium, defends it against invaders, etc. Um, so, yeah, sorry, I'm starting to stutter because this is actually getting challenging here. Um, but, oh, wow. Amazing. Um, so here, yeah, you take both rooks and then you mate on that square. I wonder, um, does anybody know if the keyboard extension works for Tactic Storm? I would like to try out the keyboard extension at some point just to see what everybody's all yapping about. I'm not a huge Ultra Bullet player, but maybe I could become one. But I'm curious, um, surely if this uh, keyboard extension is so excellent, it would be extremely well suited for this kind of activity, no? Okay, that's an illegal move. <laughs> um, I guess we have to check then. Play legal moves first. King g2 was kind of silly. Uh, win the queen because the opponent gives up the queen because they're a nice person. And then we pin the rook and pin to win. Uh, how do we win the queen here? Uh, king blocks the protection of the queen. Win the queen this way. Free queen. Yeah, I'm, I am curious what this keyboard extension thing is about. Maybe for next time I should get it set up. Um, I don't really intend to use it for Ultra Bullet play again. I can barely play Bullet as it is. Why would I play Ultra Bullet? It could be amusing. Um, uh, it might even bolster my argument about the whole Ultra Bullet situation. Uh, one sec. After our, um, after our storm here, I'll read comments that seem to be aggregating. Three bishop. All right, um, free bishop or rook, uh, mate with this check, then here, then here, then over, oh. Okay, we win a rook. That was tricky. Wait, I have to take the pawn. There's no alternative there that's reasonable to taking the pawn. Free rook, um, free queen, no, free queen this way, um, okay, free rook, not a check in sight, huh, there's got to be a check here, then f5 doesn't seem to do the job, how can there be a check if it's not f5? It's got to be f5, but f5 doesn't do anything. Oh my goodness. Okay, rook takes, my mistake. That didn't make any sense to me, in case it wasn't obvious that I just played a dumb move. Um, that'll show me for trying to entertain an audience. I have no idea what the move is here. Ah! I missed queen takes queen. Don't go to the dark side, please. Oh. What? Oh, you mean with the whole... 
Now, I think the extension, though, makes a lot of sense for a puzzle storm. Like, if you've played with smart moves on Fix or uh, US Chess Live, um, they have some appreciation for just how powerful smart move is. Uh, I think it makes a lot of sense for entering a game from, like, if you're reading it off a score sheet that you recorded, um, or if you're trying to just quickly enter moves in this kind of storm mode. I think in these cases it does make sense. So the first move here is f5. Um, I saw this. I saw this. Is this actually winning? I guess yes, because white plays king c3, and then all white can do is play king c, king b2 and king c3 while black mops up the pawns. That is an excellent tactic. <sighs> Puzzle's rated 16, 17, and I failed it. <laughs> I am very depressed about missing this one. Um, I tried to. Like, I slowed down for this one. It's a very long puzzle. Yes. It's longer than all of the moves of the solution. You have to foresee King C3. And then for C, like, Black's going to win the end game. Um, this falls in the category of pawn end game. All right. Uh, it's not so obvious why until you see it. But now that I put the tag there, that spoils the whole thing. Oh, well. We tried. Uh, let's try puzzle store. No. I guess we'll play Blitz. At least I'm still okay at Blitz, right? Is there a tournament we could play? Tournaments are exciting. Arena tournaments. Uh, under 1300 bullet arena. That sounds like me. Now, um, hmm. Well, we did promise blitz, so let's do some blitz. Maybe folks want to see rapid instead, but yeah, if the keyboard extension's like readily available, I would actually like to try it out on the tactics thing. Um, and maybe get a better sense of what it is that I seem so fervently opposed to for, um, just games in general. Like, am I right to be so diametrically opposed to this thing? Alright, so I have to get castle before I start trying to chomp a pawn. If I don't castle, bad things happen. So we're going to play some super defensive, cowardly stuff. Maybe reroute the knight through b4. Uh, I guess we're also going to prevent bishop f4. While protecting the b-pawn. Uh, so we have this square under control. Um, if some crazy tactic happens, knight a5 might occur. Alright, our opponents... Hmm. I forgot that when I late join a tournament, I tend to get paired against opponents that don't have the best winning record. So here I was expecting like the match of my life and actually I'm doing quite okay uh, without even breaking a sweat. Um, yeah, so then we play bishop f6 targeting the pawns, also targets the pawn. Our opponent does control this square for now. Um, yeah, and I have given up some squares on the king's side, that's true. Um, so they prevent me from doing bishop f6. Um, yeah, I don't know what to do. Rook c8, probably. It's not like any of our pieces are going anywhere. This is eventually going to happen. They're going to take it, and I'm going to win the d-pawn and crush them in the endgame. That's the plan. So we prevent um, a back rank mate. We unalign our queen with this rook uh, while still continuing to protect this pawn. B5, A, or A6, B5 could be a future plan, but it's probably too slow and not worth it. Also, I'm leaving open the option of playing B6 here. Yeah, so. All right, tech-wise, everything seems to be fine on the stream. I guess everybody's all chest out. Everybody was watching Eric do Scrabble today. Um, probably 
I don't know. Just need a break at this point. Um. All right. Well, it's the time for slow things because our opponent's not doing anything. So let's start this little maneuver. All right. We've taken the C4 square. And uh, I had intended to play bishop h5, and I forgot this knight actually protects the h5 square. Thankfully, I've not dropped any material just yet. But, yeah, they've got an isolated d-pawn that has... Well, it's isolated. There's no way to protect it. Um, wait, so they're just hanging the pawn now. Hoping for a tactic. Um, no, it's not hanging. Uh, it's complicated. Um, wait. No, this is actually hanging. It's just... Um, I can't afford to take it. It's complicated. Um, no, this is the correct move. There is a tactical justification here, and it's that the e2 bishop is hanging. So, they're going to do rook takes rook. I'm going to do queen takes rook. Um, unless it's more profitable to do rook takes. Uh, but almost certainly it's queen takes here. Um, hmm. Well... Yeah, we're going to continue protecting this, put the queen on an open file. They do pawn takes here. My queen's no longer... Ta oh, my plan of doing queen takes pawn has kind of vanished at this point. Still, my endgame's decent here. Um, we're going to continue with the plan because we had faith in it to begin with. And I still believe in it. So we have one tactic here, one over here, and probably a third one is going to land on their king any second now. If I can just find it. Um, yeah, so do I want my bishop to go to c5 later? I'm debating, do I reroute the bishop this way or does it go directly here? Um... That's tricky. I think I need to keep my queen on the light square here. Keep control of this. Even though my knight's going to cycle back here immediately. Um, so... Hmm. Alright. They're intending eventually playing bishop d5. I'm considering, do I do queen to c1 here? Queen c1 seems to win a piece, but it's complicated. Queen c1 does win a piece. We're playing queen c1. If king f1, bishop a5, if queen e3, knight d3, if queen takes, queen takes e1, checkmate. There are no other lines here. White is simply giving up a bishop. But they're up a minute. That's worth something, right? How many pawns is a minute worth? Or I'm sorry, I, how many seconds is a bishop worth? Is how I usually put that. Oh, right. The queen attacks the other queen. That's annoying. Well, thankfully we still have a way out of this. Um... And it involves maybe getting lucky. No, they're, they still can't defend this pawn. So I could go knight takes b2, knight c4, assuming my knight doesn't get corralled in the corner, and it might. Um, do I take the pawn? I think I take this pawn. And the idea is, oh, no, that, that's just not right. Um, yeah, they couldn't, they gave me a tempo, 
that they needed to hold on to. So next I play b4 and knight c3, and there's just no coming back from this. Um. Oh, fuck. I say there's no coming back from this. Alright, whatever. How many seconds is a bishop worth? Does anybody know? Asking for a friend. Um... Well, this sucks. This is most frustrating. Yeah, they gave me this nice little tempo here, which makes the endgame more complicated for them. Uh, we're going to take this pawn in the corner. Wow. That's impressive. Alright, screw this. Note, I cannot pre-move. Pre-move could be fatal here. Because a dick might play a move like that. Um, it's all in the spirit of blitz chess. Which is to say, like, you're playing to win. But at some point, if you have any respect for yourself, you won't do this sort of thing. Alright, just demonstrate how to checkmate. And there's the mate. Okay, I mean, I guess it's a competitive event. Um, yeah. That guy was down on his luck, he needed a win, or wanted one. Uh, it's just he got outplayed. He twice missed that night fork, and I at least spotted it the second time. Um, but yeah, if you're playing without an increment, um, you really get sucked into that negative mentality of uh, I'm just going to grind this and hope that I can flag my opponent. and. It, it's alluring for a long time, but eventually it gets old. You get tired of the games that you lose, and uh, you start realizing it's more fun playing with the increment than without it. Um, all right, let's get the king in the corner so we don't blow this. And all right, we've controlled the e5 square. H6 is coming. I've avoided queen d3 to avoid loss of tempo on knight c5. But I'm pretending that I know this opening, and I really don't. So we'll see how this goes. I think this is a target. Normally I'd want to hit like f7, e6 and such with this bishop, but my bishop's on f3 now, which is pretty weird. Um, I might sack a knight on b5 just for fun. Well, no need for that now. Um, so queen d2, knight a4, knight b6 might be an idea. Doesn't seem worth it. Um, Alright, take out Passant. Not because we can, but because it actually looks decent. Um, hmm. Oh no, my pawn. That's how you say this, right? Um... But yeah, if they take that, it's rook f to b1. Um, so it's up to my opponent to find a use for a tempo. And they do. Um, yeah, I don't know this opening. I'm pretending I do. I kind of sort of do, but... <sighs> it's a tough opening, man. Um, what am I supposed to do here? I suppose rook to d1 gets played at some point in this opening. But they're going to play rook c8, or rook e c8, and then I have to play like knight a4 to not drop stuff. Uh, also, now I have bishop f2. They gave me a free tempo. I will enjoy that. But rook uh, e c8 still 
threatens to undermine this knight. Um, okay, did not think that would happen here. That's a really cute tactic. Does it work? Probably. Um, let's try knight takes. Right. Oh, my follow-up tactic is not so great, is it? Um, that's embarrassing. All right, they're a pawn to the good here. Um, I forgot my knight on d4 is in the way. Actually, this might still be playable. You know? Screw it. Let's have some fun. Let's pretend we know this opening. Um, it's either that or suffer for the next 50 moves, so let's actually have some fun, sack some material, live like the masters of old. Um, it's not going to get very far, but it could be fun. Bishop takes f3, knight takes e8, bishop takes d1, queen takes d7, hitting this, hitting that. Um, yeah. How bad could it be? Alright, so... Everything is hanging. Um, it's probably fine. Right? Because we're attacking two pieces at once. Probably they're going to play rook b7, and... I don't have... Well, then I have two queen takes d1. Wow, this is a fork. I was thinking rook takes d1. Um, no, queen takes d1 is nice. Alright, so... I guess we just do rook takes at this point, right? Wait, I have better. Oh my goodness, this is crazy. This is absolute madness if this actually works. Rook a3. How do they stop the mate? I don't know, but let's find out. Let's be utterly disappointed when this fails. Um, but yeah, we still have queen takes d1 if and when we need it. But we don't need it just yet, now that we have rook g3 threatening queen g7 mate. Um, check. This is... Uh, I'm playing with fire here, I shouldn't do this. But we've got an audience, and the audience, like, cries for war. So... Um, all right, and the threat, rook g8. How do you stop it? I don't see that you do. Bishop g4 stops the mate in one. Oh, wow. <laughs> Bishop g4, uh, queen h8. King e7, queen e7, king moves somewhere. Eventually we check and try to win the rook. That doesn't work either. <sighs> Man. Daylight and a dollar short. We tried. Oh man, we tried so hard this game. Wait, bishop g4, h3. Renews all the threats. But then I get mated. Oh, well, um, this is awkward. All right, queen h8 or queen h6. Um, queen h6 doesn't matter, does it? Queen h8 prevents queen uh, king to g8, which I think we're okay with king g8 anyway. So we're just going to take the pawn and do fork somewhere, and then pick off the bishop and defend this. Um, 
all according to plan. Unless we get a checkmate in the middle of the board, then that's not according to plan. But um, do we have rook here, king over, rook somewhere, check, king back? We're not winning the rook on d8. Not right now. But we're two pawns up. We're two pawns up and threatening all kinds of crazy shit. Uh, so... Yeah, the king has to go block the rook again. This is a tough position to defend. And the worst part about it is that all the end games lose if you trade the rook off. So offering an exchange of all the pieces is not going to save black here. Um Well, I feel a bit scummy about it, but um, let me give some checks while I try to figure out the right move. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what the right play was there. How's this even go? This is not going to be in the table base, so let's load the engine. Uh, engine recommends that we check a few times, then we keep checking. Yeah, the engine has no idea either. That's pretty great. Alright, well, somehow we win that. Um, I'm sure the viewers all see it, even though I don't. Yeah, that was pretty crazy. Let's see. Should we give, uh, Puzzle Storm another try? Sure, why not? Um, already. <laughs> wow, on puzzle one, my instinct here was I better castle. Uh, castling is out of the picture on puzzle one here. This is not a good omen. All right, well, I'm just going to win the queen. Uh, wait. What? Okay, this is better, mate. It does. Yeah, I appreciate that these uh, puzzles have gotten more challenging. It used to be that you'd have to play, like, who knows how many of these to actually get a good puzzle. Um, now, like, in the first 10 or 15, eventually I get a good one. Uh, it's pretty nice. So, this is odd. Um, oh. It's one of those deep blue tactic things. Uh, Alright, that's mate. Wait, knight takes. Is this going to be rook takes h7? Or is it going to be knight g6 check? It has to be one or the other. Um, That's a hard decision. This is an extremely hard decision. How does everybody get this right in the first few seconds except me? If rook takes, uh, king takes is forced, but maybe there's a mate to follow. If knight check, knight takes is forced, pawn takes threatens a mate, but then black can play bishop d5 interposing against the mate, but then you can play rook takes h7, king g8, uh, and there's no mate thereafter. But it doesn't feel like rook here is correct either. That is really weird. Uh-huh. So strange. Well, we're going to sack the rook, and that's just wrong. But I can't sit there all day guessing. Like, the whole point of this is you're supposed to quickly play them. And you're supposed to get the right answers, too. That's, like, the other purpose. Um, Alright, so this is pretty simple, straightforward. Mate, this, we threaten a fork. Uh, wow. Somehow that's okay. Yeah, I think I should go back to just playing Blitz. Because, um, I'm a bit cynical about some of these. Um, but still, yeah, I guess it's, uh, at some point I'll have to get the keyboard extension and try it out and see if it helps my performance on this tactics thing. Um, 
Because it feels like if you could do smart move with that extension, as I think you can, then... Wait, how is that not winning? Ah, oh, shoot. I tried to undo the queen move so I could play Rook Takes Knight. That didn't go well. Alright, I guess I'll try it again. Uh, that's a fork. That's a fork. It's great that we failed the first puzzle. Um, but yeah. Uh, it's Sunday, right? So... Alright, that was silly. Um... I thought I had somewhere I was going with that It's Sunday comment. Uh... Apparently, the only point I can make about that is that um, I've been watching folks play Scrabble all day, and it's been delightful, and I managed to fix a number of bugs in a word definition bot, um, and add some cool new commands to the word definition bot, too. Um, so, oh goodness. Okay, that one I want to understand what I did wrong. Uh, most of these I don't super care, but that one I thought I understood. And the fact that I don't is actually kind of disturbing. Um, whoa, Rook takes Rook is forced here. Uh, otherwise we're just dropping a Rook. That's a free Queen uh, here. I just guessed that one. Um, I feel like most of these you're supposed to just guess what the move is. And I thought that's what Blitz is about. Like, the notion that there's this timer on the puzzles is what's confusing me here. But I interrupted my story. Um, my story is that, like, I'm still... I'm trying to learn Scrabble, because it's a game that I used to play, I don't know, a long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. Um, but, yeah, it was something, like, I don't know, family members thought I was okay at it. Um... But I've never... Oh no, it never would be wrong. I have played it on, in a competitive circuit. Just not in a national competitive event yet. And so playing against all these veterans who have gone to all these national tournaments and have outstanding performances is a pretty extraordinary experience. Um, like... With chess, I've, of course, I've played against folks um, who have gone to nationals and super nationals and that sort of thing. Um, who have gone to the Illinois Open, the various state open events. Uh, I've competed against quite a few folks in chess. I haven't really done that with other board games yet. Alright, what was that one I failed that had me really curious? I don't even remember. It wasn't super memorable, but sadly, in the moment after failing it, there's no way to go back and say, hey, wait, I want to... I think it was this one. My guess was queen takes here, which fails to queen takes. But, like, what else could it be? Rook e8 is clearly not it. Queen c2 doesn't do anything. Oh. Okay, yeah. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently I thought I understood this. Anyway, um, so we can exit Zen mode. Yeah, let's play some Blitz. Um, so, I usually play 3 plus 2. There aren't a lot of 3 plus 2 tournaments out there. Uh, I should be playing more Queen Pawn openings than King Pawn these days. So, wait, can I just take here? No, this is the Tarash. Right, so this is not refuted. Um, it's entirely playable for black. But I've not played it because it looks difficult to play correctly. Despite leading to an imbalanced game, and imbalanced games are a lot of fun, but I just am not one that would play the system with the black pieces, because I don't know it. That said, look where we're at now. I'm considering e3, but then this looks... What? No. 
Oh, that's clever. Okay, I might start playing this with black. That is a really nice move. The trap is that if I take this, then there's bishop b4 check. So I have to retreat. And this encourages e4 and then e3. That's amazing. Okay. <laughs> I'm getting dunked on. Uh, wow. Okay. Uh, we have to go back. And then e3 is going to strike. Okay, well, our opponent missed it somehow. But yeah, they could have played pawn e4, then pawn e3, and then we're just completely screwed. Um... Even salvaging this is going to be kind of a disaster, because I don't get to... I might get to castle now. No. Do I have to do knight takes? Or can I play bishop e2? I think bishop e2 looks playable. Um. Yeah, I think I can get away with this and actually manage to castle. Whereas after pawn takes, if I make a bishop move, um, they have like pawn d3, which didn't seem possible to defend against. And this here looks possible to defend against. It's awkward, but I think I'm fine. Right? And then we take here. They take our knight. Uh, we take here. And what's the problem? I mean, I mentioned an interest in castling, but, you know, castling's optional. As long as we can, like, play our king up and... Okay, well, this is getting bad. Alright, we'll just defend by developing our knight. There we go. Okay, yeah, you got me. Nicely done. Jeez, what in the world? Does anybody know this opening? I know, like, I play new openings every single Blitz game, and it tends to get me in extremely hot water when I play stuff I don't know. For example, I've never played Pawn Takes C5 here before. I know Pawn Takes C5 is book, but I don't know anything beyond that. Um, so, Pawn Takes is okay, Knight B5 was okay, Knight F3 is bad because it leads to, like, me playing bishop f4 later. Uh, trying to, Well, knight f3 eventually uh, encourages this kind of thing. So I'm basically losing a pawn. Bishop f4 dives further into the trap. Yeah, okay, and apparently after this and after bishop d2, there's just no recovery. And better than bishop d2 would be sacrificing material um, like this. You're just giving away an entire knight, losing your castling privileges, knights off sides. This is apparently the best you can hope for uh, at this point, um, according to the neural network anyway. So, take that with a grain of salt. Um, yeah, let's see. Can Maybe we do better this time. All right. Are we going to get another Tarash? No. No Tarash this time. We're going to stop pawn e5. Alright, does anybody know this opening? Because I pretend to. I play this with the black pieces. I don't really know how to attack this with the white pieces. Um, you'd think that I would know that sort of thing. But here I'm just down a pawn with... No compensation, really. Um, I think it's okay, but... Like, I take here, I play e3 or e4 or something, and somehow it's supposed to be fine. Um, I might be confusing this with the Queen's Gambit, where playing a4, b3 is fine. Maybe taking on b5 was overly aggressive. Um... All right, so they cannot play bishop g4, so now we're going to play pawn e3. What? No. That doesn't look right. 
This is kind of like a French at this point, this particular structure. Although our opponent hasn't played e5, um, so French is actually not right. Still, I don't see what they do. Um, this is just giving me a free tempo. think. Oh, uh, well, I missed this, but b5 is hanging. Right, so we can take on b5, I think, and then play knight f1, or knight e4, or knight c4 even. Yeah, but this looks fine. And if they're careless, knight d6 could land. I don't think they're that careless. All right. Um, we protect our knight. We again attack this pawn here. Knight e5 could maybe be an idea, but I don't see any way they could blow a tempo to just let me play knight e5. But if they do lose a tempo, knight e5 is... Uh, worthy of consideration. Otherwise, do we do queen takes here? Queen takes, queen takes knight. No, I'm sorry, queen takes, knight takes knight, and I'm down a knight. That'd be bad. So we're just going to retreat, collect our pawn, and walk away with our tail between our legs. There we go. Mission accomplished. Um, Here, my knight's awkward. Let's get this back toward the king's side and out of harm's way. Um, all right, we'll pin the knight and target this over here. Continue this operation to target the apon. Not because I think I can win it, but because I think this will just be a nuisance. And the more nuisances I can present to my opponent, the more likely they'll make a mistake. Uh, shit. <laughs> uh, they're not the only player who can make mistakes. Whatever. Alright. I have no patience. My mind had drifted. Oh, my mind had drifted. Um... Honestly, I've been thinking about where is everyone tonight and how much longer should we be going? Um, these are questions that we'll need answering at some point. Not right now, but we're going to defend with knight f1 and try to hang on for dear life and maybe eventually pick up the a pawn and draw the end game. That's the current plan. Um... Yeah, I did see that another chess player, um, a very well-recognized player, is also playing, and so I have some interest in checking out what they're doing. Um, so, it's possible we might play a couple more games and then just call it there. Also, I'm curious about one other thing. Is this person that I usually follow who does some video games, are they? No, they're not live yet. I must have their schedule wrong. Alright, um... Well, let's... Wait. Um... <laughs> I don't have any tricks here, sadly. Okay. Yeah, if we're going to try to checkmate, we're going to have to be not so subtle about it. I mean, I could try knight h5 and sack it, but that doesn't do anything. This intends to play pawn takes g6 at some future moment, um, as well as opening the h-file. Actually, it looks like I could get some extremely nice time pressure against this opponent. Um because I'm actually confusing them with my moves. And they're not the only player confused. Um, but yeah, we attempt and we're feigning that, hey, we might attack this someday, but really our goal is over here. 
Um, mm -hmm. Let's just get the king out of that one. Not have to worry about that yet. All right. Um, sure, let's play the sun game. That's not a free pawn. Yeah. So, let's see. This is actually extremely tricky at this point. All right, we set up a pin over here and discovered mate threat there. Um, so, now we pick up the knight. And the knight doesn't have a way to defend the queen. Yeah, so when you're losing in an endgame, there's a lot of really tricky stuff you can do much of the time. Um, so how in my opponent's stead might I have played this endgame differently? Um, okay, well, yeah, it was painful for them giving up the pawn in the opening, but they quickly got the material back. Uh, this is good. Up to this point, they developed all their pieces. They offered a queen exchange. I don't think they seriously considered rook takes a7. If they had stopped to think about this, like, okay, yeah, I'm threatening to take the pawn. My king's under attack. Their king is in the midst of a back rank mate threat. Um, so if I were them, I don't know that I would have necessarily played rook fc8. Probably would have played like h6 or g6 or something, even though you're not supposed to push these. Or you could do Feingold's move, but here that just weakens e6 too much. It's like all these weakening pawn moves, um, yeah, they do weaken things, but I'm not sure. Like, rook fc8 looks tempting, but you need something defending your king. There are knights in the middle of the board. Uh, what would Stockfish do? Stockfish should play queen d8 or rook c1. Yeah, yeah. So I know I'm threatening to win the pawn, but it's not the biggest thing to worry about in this position. And there are lots of other pawns on this board. For example, here's a pawn. A tennis player? Sadly, no. No. No, chess has been my thing ever since I invented it. Tennis, not so much. Um, I'll have to come up with a backstory for who invented tennis, but it was not me. But yeah, so somehow my opponent had just played a lot of really defensive moves here. Yeah, so... And that's okay, but if you're going to play this defensive kind of style, you do eventually you're going to say enough is enough and want to start attacking. And it's not always going to be easy, but... Um, yeah, if you're playing passively like this, be careful about your king position um, when you switch from going from passive to active. Uh, be careful to not expose your king in the process. Yeah, you're not wrong. You're definitely not wrong. The name does go about there. Uh, it's just, sadly, I've not had a tennis career. Um, and probably at this point won't have one. Um, but yeah, I think by this point, I'm just completely winning here. So that's an unfortunate miss for my opponent. All right, I guess we'll do one more. Uh, by that, we mean a puzzle storm. And then that'll be that. Um, so yeah, thanks everyone for joining. Hope that was fun. Hope we've all learned something from the experience. I guess my takeaway is that I've... When I improved at Blitz, I only did so because I had played a ton of correspondence chess on chess.com um, and some other chess sites, but mostly chess.com. It was a very good correspondence experience there. Um, allowed me to take vacation when I needed it. Uh, I'm not saying like everything about every chess site is perfect, but like correspondence is something you do need to practice to get better at 
faster time controls. You have to be able to find the moves in slower time controls first. And that can take a bit of discipline to find both your moves and your opponent's ideas. Um, obviously, tactics is, some, is the aspect you can train without all that boring correspondence stuff. But if you're looking for deeper insights about just how people find moves in the game, um, you will need to play slower games. And if you can do so at your own pace, I think that's ideal. Um, I'll be working on some patches to try to make correspondence clocks work better on Lee Chess than they currently work. Currently, you can play with X days per move, but there's really not a concept of vacation or a concept of me building up time on the clock because I'm about to go on vacation and I need to make sure I don't flag. Uh, that's something we still need to work on a bit. Um, but yeah, you can learn a lot just drilling tactics. Eventually it gets boring. Um, and so if you're looking for more insights, you really do need to play like classical or slower. Um, that way, you also like read up and chess books, not just by person publishing the flashiest new tactics book out there even though those are a lot of fun. Um, read up on the games of the Masters and the games that were in like Chess Life or other magazines new in chess. Um, yeah, give that a study. Uh, don't focus on like... I mean, historically, my great predecessors and such, you could learn a wealth of things about the history of the game. Um, I don't know what to do here. Um, but you're not going to learn uh, how to play like Kasparov just by looking at a Kasparov game. It's Some things are above uh, us mere mortals. Um, I have no idea what to do here. Here it is. Um, but yeah. Practice, practice, practice. I think I escaped the mate this way. Or do I have to do this? I don't know. No idea. Anyhow, yeah, it was a fun experience today. I uh, hope everyone enjoyed it.